Hey, I'm Pamela. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be ranking all 13 Halloween movies. But before we get started, please don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future posts. And you can also follow me over on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. So these movies, in my opinion, are very hard to rank because you have to factor in a lot of different things. Nostalgia plays a big role in how I feel about these movies, but you also have to look at what is actually a better movie in general, nostalgia aside. Even looking at my ranking list now, I don't even feel too certain on it. And I know not everyone is going to agree with my ranking. I mean, there are so many of these movies, so I feel like everyone's ranking is going to be different. There's no need to get upset at my ranking. You're allowed to feel differently. So with that being said, let's get into it. Coming in last place at number 13, we have Halloween 2 from 1981. I know this might be a controversial ranking because I have heard several people call it a perfect sequel, but to me it's not. I just think it was very boring. John Carpenter himself has said the sequel is an abomination, and one of my mutuals on TikTok called it pure ambient, and I have to say that I agree. It was just very slow moving. It like entirely takes place in the hospital. Lori virtually doesn't do anything in this movie, and it's just my least favorite. Coming in at number 12, we have Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. This movie was somewhat boring and more on the gruesome and vulgar side, which I get it was zombie style, but just a little too gory for me. I did enjoy Rob Zombie's first Halloween more than this one. Coming in at number 11, we have Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. This was actually Paul Rudd's first movie ever. I did think this was another boring sequel and not my favorite. I didn't really like the whole cult storyline, and I didn't like that they recasted Danielle Harris for the opening. Coming in at number 10, we have Halloween Resurrection. I know a lot of people don't like this one, but I don't hate it. It's a little nostalgic for me because I would watch it a lot as a kid. Most people say this is a terrible movie, but in my opinion, it's camp. It's so bad that it's good. I do like Buster Rhymes being in it. And of course, I love when he says, trick or treat, motherfucker. Trick or treat, motherfucker. And of course, Lori dies in this movie. Like I said, it's not great, but it's definitely not the worst one. Coming in at number nine, we have Halloween Ends. I know a lot of people were very disappointed with this movie, and I understand why. Michael took a back seat in this one, perhaps to mirror Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, possibly. But objectively, this isn't a bad movie. I do enjoy the character of Corey Cunningham, but I do think the ending was a little anticlimactic. Lindsay Wallace wasn't there for the finale, which I think is a shame. I like that Michael was grinded up for like a definitive kill. However, I think the part from Halloween Kills, when the entire town gangs up on him, should have taken place in the last movie, before killing Michael Myers. Another issue that I have with this movie is how Lori just moved on and is okay and happy again when they had no idea where Michael was. You know, in the first movie of the new trilogy, Halloween 2018, she's having a hard time dealing with her trauma and goes to great lengths to protect herself, but she at least knew where Michael was. She knew that he was locked up. In this one, in Halloween Ends, she doesn't know where he is, so shouldn't she be taking even more precautions in this movie? That just didn't make sense to me. Coming in at number 8, we have Rob Zombie's Halloween. A lot of people don't like the zombie remakes, and I didn't care for the second one. But the first one, however, I thought was well done. Some people don't like having the backstory on Michael and his childhood, but I enjoyed it. I thought Scout Taylor Compton was a great Laurie. I liked the changes that they made to the story, and I really liked this version of Loomis. I also love that they included Danielle Harris having her play Annie Brackett. I also love that Brad Dourif was in it, playing Sheriff Brackett. 
And fun fact, Danielle Harris and Brad Dourif were both in the movie Urban Legend in 1998. And now they played father and daughter in this movie. Coming in at number seven, I have Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. This one, I was torn on where to place it because in all honesty, it's not that great of a movie. It definitely has its issues, but it's very nostalgic for me. I watched it a lot as a kid around Halloween time. I do like the character Jamie Lloyd. The chase scene at the end of this movie is great. The way Michael tries to plow them down with the car, and then Jamie hiding in the laundry chute, and Michael stabbing it and she climbs back up. Loomis was annoying in this movie though, and I don't like that Rachel was killed so early and in such an anticlimactic way. She should have been the one to sacrifice herself for Jamie instead of Tina. I do think the mask in Halloween 5 is the worst one. (laughs) Coming in at number 6, I have Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Obviously, this one is not a Michael Myers movie, and I think that's why a lot of people don't like it. But it is a good movie, and definitely underrated. Although I think a lot of people are coming around to it. If you haven't seen this one yet, or you just don't watch it as much, you should definitely give it a watch. Coming in at number five, I have Halloween 2018. I enjoyed this movie, and I think this version of Michael is one of the best we've ever seen. He was very brutal in this one, and the kills were pretty creative, and the mask was good. I do kind of have an issue with Lori and how she's lived her life for the past 40 years. Because this movie is a direct sequel to 1978, Lori has only went through the events of the first movie. And if we look at a movie like Scream, Sydney deals with her trauma very well compared to Lori, after Sydney possibly dealt with far worse. Obviously, everyone deals with trauma differently, and I've never gone through something like that, so who am I to really say how Lori should be dealing with her trauma? But 40 years just seems like a long time to go to those lengths, and I mean, she's pushed away her entire family in the process. And then, like I said earlier, in Halloween Ends, she just moves on and is happy again when she doesn't even know where Michael is compared to this movie, Halloween 2018, where she at least knows where he is, where he's locked up. It makes me sad for her daughter, Karen, that she didn't get to know the version of her mother where she's happy and normal. Coming in at number four, I have Halloween Kills. I think this movie did a better job at what the original Halloween 2 wanted to do. You know, taking place on the same night as the first movie. I liked that Allison's boyfriend had a little redemption. I like when the town gangs up on Michael, even though it does piss me off that all those people still can't take down Michael. But I did really enjoy this movie, and I liked that they included the masks from Season of the Witch. Three of the kids are each wearing the masks from Halloween 3. Coming in at number 3, I have Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Again, this movie is just very nostalgic for me. I watched it a lot as a kid. I like the character Jamie Lloyd. And this is the first movie after Halloween 3 where Michael's back again. The mask in this movie is really bad though. Coming in at number 2, I have Halloween H2O. Many people don't like this movie, but I do. This one is a direct sequel to Halloween 2, which wipes away the Jamie Lloyd storyline. The mask in this one is terrible though, and Michael is barely in this movie, which I didn't even realize till my most recent rewatch. But I like the final showdown, and I like the moment when Laurie and Michael first come face to face through the glass window in the door. I also like the scene at the end when Laurie chops his head off, which of course ends up not actually being him. But if it was him, I think this would have been a good ending for her and Michael's story. So it is a shame they reveal in Resurrection that Michael switched places with a paramedic. People say that was retconned as a way to make another movie, but I don't know because if you watch the scene in H2O when Laurie chops his head off, He looks confused and like he's trying to take the mask off, but it won't come off. So to me, it seems like they always intended for that to be the storyline, but I don't know. 
And then finally, coming in first place at number one, we of course have Halloween 1978. Nothing will ever beat the original. This is just such a great movie. It's one of the first scary movies I watched as a kid and very nostalgic for me. It obviously inspired a lot of different slasher films that came in later years. Scream being one of them, which as you guys know, is my number one favorite movie of all time. So we just owe a lot to this movie. And of course, John Carpenter's theme song is just like the greatest thing ever. I love when Halloween time comes around because I get to watch this movie on loop. And I just really don't have any complaints about this movie. It's a great movie. There you have it. That is my ranking of all 13 Halloween movies. Leave a comment down below and let me know what your ranking is. Like I said, I know not everyone is going to agree with my ranking. There's so many different movies that I feel like everyone's ranking is different anyway. Thanks again for tuning into another video. Please don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And please also go follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I've been pretty active over there lately. Thanks again, and I will see you guys in the next video.